Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I have more excellent video to continue to show you and wait till you see it. First, I want to start with this one. This is from BitBoy. He put this tweet out. Watch this. If I can hit the refresh button. In the past year, XRP was not available on most exchanges in the US. And its future was looking uncertain for a minute there. But as the trial progressed, the case has begun to fall apart. Now it seems that Ripple will be getting away with a small fine, and then we'll have full permission to continue working with banks and eventually go public. As we covered in previous videos, Ripple has existing relationships with banks around the world and a suite of products that allow banks to make international payments much more efficient than traditional finance. After years of being criticized by the crypto community for working with banks, Ripple is now fighting against the government in a case that could set a firm precedent that will likely end up shielding other crypto projects from prosecution in certain areas. This doesn't mean that we will get any kind of regulatory clarity from this case. The SEC is fighting with everything they have to make sure that doesn't happen. Because if they have to define their regulatory power, it will limit how much power they actually have. All right. So Ripple's fighting the fight. Okay. John Deaton tweeted this out. The NIH withheld documents that were, were requested pursuant to Freedom of Information Act requests. I've made se several Freedom of Information Act requests for different documents to the SEC. XRP holders may have to similarly litigate those requests. There is no legitimate reason not to turn over Hinman's public calendar. So now we have a government that will not turn over things. The, free, the whole point of the Freedom of Information Act is to be able to see documents that are that should be public documents because these people are being paid by taxpayers. Do you see something wrong with what is going on in this freaking country? What in the world has happened? John Deaton again. I believe this is the video that I had put out um, yesterday. Let me do, uh, or the other day, let me, let me do a refresh here and see this thing's got 142,000 views deservedly so because everybody smells a rat i believe the sec this is a quote from joseph lubin in there i believe the sec has made all the statements about decentralization that they're going to make lubin never worked for the sec he wasn't authorized to speak for the sec how was he so sure the sec wouldn't provide clarity for other tokens did someone assure him of that Exactly. And then this is also, this is a clip that I went and found. Listen to this from Joseph Lubin. Uh, one of the projects that Consensus backed is Civil, which I became a member of and which helped fund our company, got us off the ground. Um, that has been... And, and Civil is a, a platform for sustainable and ethical journalism. There was a token sale. Yep. There was a lot of build up to the token sale. Um, I would like to play a clip, this is my last one, I promise, great. Um, from our conversation in August about uh -huh. the impending token uh -huh. sale. Yeah. Not only is Sybil trying to resurrect journalism, it's also trying to be the first mass consumer blockchain project. Can it, can it, can it do that? We'll see. Um, we're setting the, the barriers to entry uh, very, very high, unfortunately, and we've been in long deep discussions with regulators around the world about long deep discussions they got a trouble when you're selling these kinds of tokens basically how to structure the tokens properly how to market the tokens properly so that you wouldn't be deemed by the sec for instance to be selling unregistered securities to americans and so we've had to go especially carefully and slowly and it's not about uh, a quick win here, although we'd like some quick wins. It's about building a, a really sturdy foundation, sturdy infrastructure for transforming journalism. All right, so there was a token sale. We, we weren't supposed to call it an ICO, because sure. it wasn't. Because it rhymes with IPO, and that leads 
token buyers to I mean, think that there's some sort of potential this, return this on guy, investment. This guy's literally making fun of the process. I mean, they're literally putting out things and they're calling them a not a security and and for everybody else they would be called a security. That's what Ethereum was, an ICO that they're, they're trying to pretend was not an ICO. I mean, this stinks to high heaven and I'm, I've got even more, folks. Keep watching. Here we go. Here he is again. And is the SEC accepting yeah. that? Yeah, so, so if you, there have been multiple statements by... Um, by Bill Hinman, Director of Corporate Finance. Uh, Jay Clayton uh, actually backed up uh, some of Bill's words recently. Uh, Hear that? So the idea there is if it's structured properly, so that it's a usage token, um, it, and if it's marketed properly, so you're not telling people who buy the token that you buy this token and you're gonna make 5X your money. Uh, you tell people that if you buy this token, you can read um, news from ethical newsrooms. I mean, that's a hell of a lot less sexy. Do you think you're going to get enough people to buy into these projects? Absolutely. So this guy's... And is the yeah. SEC accepting is, that? He's issuing tokens like there's no tomorrow, but everybody else can't even get the SEC to give them any clarity on anything. It's, it's insane. This is insane. And, and I, you're, talk, you're listening to a guy who, who I watched Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple beg for regulatory clarity for years, like two or three years. They were on interview after interview. We just need some regulatory clarity. Meanwhile, this guy, they're letting him in like he's part of the family at the SEC. Wait till you see the clip towards the end of this show. Just wait. Now, I wanted to point this out. This was a few months, like two or three months before Clayton dropped the Ripple lawsuit and walked out the door. Uh, Sullivan and Cromwell advised consensus in acquiring Quorum Enterprise blockchain platform from J.P. Morgan. Consensus, of, of course, is, is Joseph Lubin's firm. And then there was this. Uh, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon was famously anti-blockchain, and he's come around to developing a project uh, with you. Yeah, he, um, he always plotted the Jamie coin. He was just trying to... Right, you know, he was just, waiting not, for Nothing it. to see here. This blockchain thing isn't going to happen. So... Uh, JP Morgan. Okay. And then there's this tweet. Look at this. If anyone doubts white collar interest in crypto, I'm in a room crammed with hundreds of hundreds of lawyers, financiers, and such types. All are here for the launch of crypto firm consensus. Ministry of Finance, the main speaker. All right. And then this is consensus. This is their investors, MasterCard, NGC Ventures, whatever that is, Almeida Research, JP Morgan, LAIO, Maker, DAIO, BlackRock, BNY Mellon, quote, Quotidian Ventures. All right. Now, I want you to listen up real quick because at the beginning of this clip, you're going to hear from David Rudder, who's the CEO of R3. Okay. We've talked about R3 a lot on this channel. I believe David Rudder is expressing the same view as everybody else in crypto because I believe for the for 2017, 18, 19, and 20, really, everybody in crypto was like, we need regular regulatory clarity. We need regulatory clarity. What's going on? What is Jay Clay? What's going on here? Meanwhile, Joseph Lubin's like having dinner with the people at the SEC. I mean, that's I'm just making that up, but he. They're being, he's being treated like he's a member of the SEC family and everybody else is asking for regulatory clarity. And then when they give it to him, nothing about it makes any sense. Nothing. He did an ICO. He did an illegal ICO in 2014. Everything he says he didn't do, he did do. And I've played you the video. That's not just me talking. And yet they gave him a free pass. Now watch David Rudder. David Rudder is literally calling him out saying, what are you talking about? Then listen to what Joe Lubin says. I told you I wanted to wind him up a little bit before uh, the panel. So <laughs> Joe, you can't be serious that you think ICOs are not the Wild West right now. I might be misunderstanding what you're saying. I think that you guys have done some work about building the technical infrastructure. But if you think the SEC, CFTC, if the F FCA and, you know, BOJ and all the regulators around the world are on top of this uh, thing, I, I, I totally disagree with you. Now, just so you know, this comment was made and then later on in the session, they asked Joseph Lubin the question you're about to hear. 
this was not a direct response to David Rudder. Just want to make sure that was clear. So a question on Joe to David, you both, you're both coming from out of the U.S. When is the SSE coming up to speed? For um, they're asking. Uh, don't want to say too much, but they're well up to speed. Um, so he just looked at him and said, they're well up to speed. How does Joseph Lubin know where all of that is? All these other guys are, are can't they're they're getting nothing, and I'm going to show you that they're getting nothing in the next clip. Uh, they they have access to more information than we have access to. And I want you to look at his body language. He's scared to death. He doesn't know what he can and can't say while he's talking because he knows that he has information and knows what other people can't know, and they don't want anybody to know that this is sick. What's going on here? Let me start back. When is the ESC coming up to speed? Um, they're asking. Uh, don't want to say too much, but they're well up to speed. Um, uh, they they have access to more information than we have access yeah. to, um, and uh, they have made statements to the effect that um, they hadn't seen a token launch that didn't have some aspects of a security. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confident uh, that uh, they will or are starting to understand uh, that there are tokens that uh, are utility tokens and would not be classified as securities. Uh, that said, I, I think it's uh, they have to wrap their head around the, the technology, but uh, I think it's business as usual for them. Um, they uh, are going to continue to ferret out fraudulent projects. Mm -hmm. uh, they're continue to apply uh, Absolutely. The, the Howey test. So it's uh, uh, we felt like we've had a good understanding um, of uh, what a token is with respect to securities law, and uh, we're increasingly confident. Um, so at the end, finding the balance between innovation and protecting the consumer, the investor on the other side. David, is that yeah? So uh, make me throw up now. Meanwhile, while he's getting this treatment, this is from January of 2018. This is from November of 2019. So by this time, Ripple still hasn't even gotten any in, made any headway with, with Jay Clayton, any of these guys. This is where Ripple is sitting versus the way Joseph Lubin is sitting. Joseph Lubin had an ICO. Ripple did not have an ICO. I mean, it's that crazy. All of this is that crazy. Listen to what... This is when Michael Arrington was was interviewing Chris Larson. Uh, uh, oh, you would agree that the SEC is the single greatest evil in in stopping the U.S. from being competitive in crypto. You would say that, right? I'm going to take back your socks. Keep Let's socks put this back over there. I mean, Chris Larson is going out of his way to be diplomatic, but who would blame him if he's got this kind of position at this point? You can't you can't say things that I can say because, but I know how you really feel about that. But I do that. The, the Trump he's, gets he's, this is his own. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not going to go too deep into this. I did but not say that. So actually, I'm going to put the Trump one back over there. We're not going to talk about that. So um, they're, they're asking. Uh, don't want to say too much, but they're well up to speed. Um, so in other words, that's Joseph Lubin's experience versus the other being Chris Larson and Ripple's experience. Man, it doesn't take a genius to figure this all out, folks. If you've done nothing but watch the videos in their own words that I have put out. You don't really, uh, there's not really any more questions in your head. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that we live in some shameful times in the United States of America. That's all I got to say.